This is a James Poe Artistry Consultant Moment. Hi, Perceptive Readers. This is James, and good morning with James Poe Artistry. Today will be Saturday by the time you first hear this, at least on the Spotify podcast. But you being in this exclusive group, if you will, you're actually hearing it the day before. What I want to share with you happens to be this. If this is a age, in a sense, there's many names that they call it, well, at least several names that really stand out, but I still call it the age of revelation, you see, Uh, the unveiling, the revealing of what is what, so that people will be able to understand and make clear cut decisions, as it were. You know, and having that knowledge in mind, that's why I continue to encourage all who actually have a voice, uh, have a measure of strength, and maybe in some cases courage to continue to express yourself in all sincerity, you see in all sincerity. If you have facts, also in all honesty, you see, of what you're talking about. And so this helps. Here's the reason why in this age of revealing. You see, uh, I created a post um, within the past week that dealt with the, the monk, See, the monk won. (laughs) That's what I called it. And so I encourage you to actually listen to that post or watch the video. And it'll give you some insight as to how people view monks and also how monks uh, really live or take each day at a time, you see, in their development of their own spirituality, the way that they view life. And see... What I'm informing you of is this. Even as a monk, that is the life that they chose chose to what? Enhance their spirituality. And yet, with billions and billions of people on this earth, do you feel that even in God's eyes, everybody would have to live a life exactly the way they see monks, especially ones in monasteries. You probably have come to the conclusion yourself that God looks at us the same way that there's variety throughout the earth, uh, different abilities, different skills. Even the scriptures talks about different gifts for each servant. And it even said of those different gifts, Not everybody can be a hand, you see. Not everybody uh, can be an eye. Not everybody can be this or or be that. But Paul still went on to describe that no matter what role or part they play in that body, it is for the encouragement or upbuilding of others, you see. That's one of the things. And also, it just goes to show... uh, not to look down on any other uh, body member as well. Paul talked about that. So to actually look at one uh, uh, body part and say, you're uh, not uh, worth anything or what have you, uh, I'll just ignore you altogether. Then guess what? Paul was saying that is normally the body part that you actually take care of or try to dress up and bring out the beauty, okay? That's just one of the illustrations that Paul uh, gave. He was certainly letting you know that you wouldn't uh, tear it down. You see what I'm saying? You wouldn't tear it down. Now, with that being said, it's interesting since we're talking about using our mental faculties to think and things of that nature. All right. There is uh, one uh, business owner, uh, corporation owner, uh, 
you know, partnerships and everything else, who has given an interview over the year. I've actually highlighted um, his music uh, quite a bit over the years as well, and even interviews. And he was talking about uh, the ego, and that's what I really want to emphasize, the ego, because I'm going to tell you something uh, that will help you to appreciate the misleading at times where bad things can happen uh, because a lack of knowledge and misunderstanding can go too far. Okay. Well, what he was talking about is he has nothing to prove to nobody. And you know what? One thing that I've noticed from this business owner over the years Everything that he continues to relate and says at times, make no mistake about it, that is who he is. You see, that is who he is. Uh, as far as his view, um, outlook on life, he even um, has given examples sometimes that, and this is true, when you come from like a ghetto type area and you see that your living conditions or nothing is really anything to really keep you always encouraged about life will be better, then you're just willing to just go for it or, or take chances that you wouldn't otherwise take. And see, and I'm, and I'm going to stop with that statement right there because that was his line of thought uh, to basically say that's why sometimes you took chances at those ages and you pursued uh, a different um, opportunity here and there just because whatever the opportunity was, the living conditions in it, you see in, in their way of experience, it, it was certainly going to still be better than sitting up there staying in that same type of state. Okay. So now, uh, now leave that alone because I want to uh, go a next a step further, okay, about, you see, misunderstandings and things of that nature. Uh, what happens, and see, we're talking about still uh, the ego. You know what? And some persons will understand exactly what I'm saying because of the level that they are on in understanding. You know what? Um... First thing, let me share with you even Jehovah God, okay? Jehovah God created everything. He also showed from the way that his, listen to this word, throne in heaven is set up, his chariot, um, other examples in the Bible uh, uh, that he has given that there is a majesty on the level where it is, it's masculine. It's more masculine than anything, okay? Uh, it, it truly is. Now, we've already covered, and we will again in the future, about God having still, if he could sit up there, let me sit up there, if he can express himself as a mother feeling for his chicks or his hands, but he was talking about the nation of Israel, and he talked about women quite a bit and his feelings as being, see, on that same level or really higher. So I just didn't really express that, the, you know, maybe the correct way, but because we know his feminine expression in that way, as some people look at it, is still even much, much more incomparably higher than even the divine feminine herself. And there's no disrespect when I'm saying that. I'm just stating the fact. So we know that he has the qualities. Uh, and what I'm sharing with you is still overall, when you look at the heavenly scene, uh, 
sons of God, as the scriptures describe other offsprings, not offspring, other creations of heroes and things of that nature. You see, it's in the masculine for a variety of reasons that we'll talk about maybe in the future. But this is what I want to talk about now. See, on the earth, what has happened at times, and you can even see, remember, God in his love and his patience, he deals with us according to knowledge. Because didn't you know that even back in those days uh, when the Bible was being written about, you know, the Old Testament, uh, where they had Baal worship and Molech, where all sorts of type of worship. But did you know at times, whatever God these different people were serving at different times, don't you know, in a sense, they would still call their God, not only by their name at times, but sometimes it was like a form of a, of a, a majesty, if you will. And I cannot remember if it was like Elohim or it was another form or, or maybe just the way they said, my God, Baal or what have you. Where I'm telling you this for a reason, because you know their gods were what? All wrapped up to the warpness and the extremeness uh, of the ego, if you will, you see. See, took something that Jehovah God had made totally beautiful and representative of procreative power and majesty and dignity, but these other gods warped it. You see, warped it. Now, I want to share that with you for a reason, because when it even came to Jehovah's own people at times, the way some of them wrote even about Jehovah God, you know, they may not even call him Lord, but actually some of them may have used the same type of words that could even translate into Baal, but they really wasn't calling him Baal. It was more still in a form of a titled form or a majesty uh, that comes out of those types of translations and things at times. And that's why translations get so mixed up sometimes where it'll make it look like uh, Jehovah was some type of a, uh, a uh, false god or demon god, and he actually wasn't. It was still just the way they were using um, this expression of great power and majesty. And I told you it was more in the title form. See, with all that being said, see, even down to this day, you've heard me mention there is the good type of pride. There is even the very understandable um, definition or application or feeling of even jealousy. You see what I'm saying? See, the difference between even when God talks about he's jealous about this or that, and look at it this way. Aren't you jealous for your family? Aren't you jealous for your mate? Aren't you jealous uh, for your offspring? You see what I'm saying? Aren't you jealous for something that you put a lot of hard work into? You see, that came from your own heart. And I said again, maybe some type of spirituality behind it. And then if somebody was to actually try to usurp that, how would you feel? You would feel jealous, wouldn't you? You see what I'm saying? Quite possibly you would. Now, with that being said, there's a difference between being jealous 
and being envious. See, remember, a person who is envious, that can take you to another level of destructiveness. That can take you to another level that not only do you want quite possibly what the person have, but even if you don't want it, you want to make sure that person doesn't have it either. You see, that's not the way Jehovah God is. See, when Jehovah God said he is jealous, he's jealous for what's his. You see, and even to this day, even people who are taking things from him and taking things from his own people at times. Oh, well, you know how that is all the time. Uh, look how he still shows um, patience and restraints and try to use reasoning with these law defying different people and nations and things of that nature. Nature. Now, even though that won't go on forever, the point is we see many examples through the Bible on that's the way he is. See, that's the way he really is. In all his majesty, in all his power that he has, what, under his throne or in his throne because he is the throne. But you know what I'm talking about here. So the, so the whole point is, Sometimes you still see if people want to talk about the difference between ego and then uh, you, you see all the times or, or what have you. Sometimes really, even though they're taking it to a negative aspect of it or what have you, it's like, no, you, you're just not understanding this the correct way. And it's probably because of a projection or something personally, see, on, on, on their end, that's really showing their own ego or misunderstanding is acting up really more than the person who they're accusing, you see. And so with that said, in closing, I mentioned about that business owner where he still even touched on this that some that when sometimes when he doesn't respond in a way that other persons expect him to respond, see one thing that he's learned is well he knows or I, or I don't want to say he learned he he probably it could have been naturally what he observed probably at, at a young age is that he doesn't try to engage another ego in a disruptive manner, you see, like a lot of people do, where they get all puffed up just because, you know, all oh, that person is doing this or that. So, and that's why sometimes people even look at him as being what? Arrogant or maybe more just because he doesn't respond in that way. Now, let me say one more thing because I said I know this was going to be in closing is this. See, it's the same thing today where I talk, where I told you about this age of revelation and things of the nature. This is what I'm going to say, and this is what I mean, where a lot of persons, well, not a lot of persons, but some persons will know exactly what I mean by this, because a lot of persons won't. You know, it's really, it's really a very sad observation when the type of ego that we've talked about already through here is linked with a legitimate service or resource that people need. So it's done in a way to slander that legitimate humane need so to affect the people's thinking from using it or giving it. See, some of them, are, some people right now understand exactly what I'm talking about. 
we're not going to hopefully with the revelation experience what we experienced a few years ago on that level. Have a very good morning, perceptive readers. Take care.